So in this question, we are asked to find the centroid of a region bounded by two curves. So really your first step would be to graph the two curves. And we've gone ahead and have done that already. The curve that is colored in red is actually the curve y equals x cubed minus x. And the curve underneath it is y is equal to x squared minus 1. And you definitely want to graph them first because that's going to help you visualize the area that is bounded by those two curves. If we look at the formula for the centroid, we definitely will need to figure out the area between the curves. And indeed, that is going to be the next step. If you have any trouble graphing the equations, you could certainly use a graphing calculator. If you're not allowed to use a calculator, the next best thing to do would be to set the functions equal to each other. So for example, we could take the x cubed minus x and then set that equal to x squared minus 1. And then you'd have to try to solve this equation for x. And to do that, you'd have to gather all terms to one side. So we would end up with x cubed minus x squared minus x plus one is equal to zero. And then you'd have to try to factor it. This one might factor by grouping. So for example, you could factor out an x squared. This would leave you with x minus one. Over here, you could factor out a minus one, which will leave you also with x minus one. And then you would group these two terms together to make x squared minus one times x minus one. And then you keep on going here and you set Actually, no, you can factor further. You could do x minus 1 times x plus 1, x minus 1. And then you solve each of these factors by setting them to 0. So you get x equals 1, x equals negative 1, and then again, x equals 1. That's repeated already. So negative 1 and 1 would be the bounds of where the two curves intersect. And we can confirm that by looking at the graph. They do indeed intersect at negative 1 and at positive 1. And then from there, you could start plugging in some more values of x and start plotting some points for each curve. And then you could connect the dots to make the two graphs. So we can move on to the actual calculation of the centroid. So we made the graph. The next thing we need to do is calculate the area. So the area, we learned this in a previous unit, would be the integral from your lower x bound to your upper x bound of basically your top function minus your bottom function. And then you'll do that with respect to x. Look back at the picture and you can probably see that the top function is the one colored in red, the x cubed minus x. And the bottom function is the blue one, x squared minus one. So we'll go ahead and set that up. And the lower bound was negative one, the upper bound was positive one. And then we have the top function of x cubed minus x minus the bottom function. Make sure you put a parentheses around your bottom function. And the reason you need to put the parentheses around the bottom function, of course, is because we need to distribute this minus sign. A lot of students I've witnessed forget to distribute that minus sign. So we will go ahead and simplify the integrand. We have x cubed minus x. And then after distributing the minus sign, it's minus x squared plus one, <clears throat> excuse me, with respect to x. We can now go ahead and integrate. These are simple power rules. So x cubed becomes x to the fourth over four x becomes x to the 2 over 2, and then we have x cubed over 3, and then the integral of 1 is just x. We have to evaluate this from negative 1 to 1. Recall that you plug in the upper bound first, so you're going to have basically 1's substituted in for the x's. And then you'll plug in the lower bound with a minus sign between them. And then when you simplify these, the first value should get you a 5 twelfths. And then the next value should have been negative 11 twelfths. And then when you combine those, you're going to get 16 twelfths, which of course reduces to 4 thirds. So that's the area that we're going to be using in the calculation of the x and y coordinates for the centroid. So we next move on to calculation of the x coordinate of the centroid. Now let's go back up and look at the formula. And we can see that the x coordinate for the centroid is going to be 1 divided by the area times the integral from your lower x bound to your upper x bound. And then be careful here because you have x and then multiplied by what they call f of x minus g of x. The f of x is just your top function and the g of x is just your bottom function. So we're going to integrate basically top minus bottom. Make sure you multiply it by x as well and then put one over the area 
as a constant in front of the integral. So it's going to look like this. You'll have one over your area multiplied by the integral from your lower x bound to your upper x bound times, or of x times your top function of x cubed minus x minus your bottom function. Once again, make sure you put the bottom function in parentheses. And this will be with respect to x. We know one divided by four thirds is just three fourths. Before we distribute the x, let's simplify inside the brackets. So distribute that minus sign gives you minus x squared plus one. Now you can distribute that x. This should have a little bar over it. So now you'll have x to the fourth minus x squared minus x cubed plus x. And again, these are simple little power rules for integrating. So we'll just go through and add one to each exponent and divide by the new exponent. Luckily, the integration in many of these problems isn't terribly challenging. And then we'll evaluate this from negative one to one. Let's go ahead and just plug in the upper bound, followed by the lower bound, and then subtract. So the bounds have been plugged in. When you plug in the upper bound of one, you should get seven sixtieths. And then you're going to subtract the result of plugging in the lower bound, which should be 23 sixtieths. And of course, seven minus 23 is negative 16. So you're gonna have three fourths multiplied by negative 16 over 60. Maybe do a little bit of calculator work. And once you simplify this, you should get negative 0.2, also known as negative one fifth. So the X coordinate for the centroid is going to be negative one fifth. And now we need to move on and find the Y coordinate as well. And the Y coordinate has a slightly different formula. So it still has the one over the area and then the integral with the same bounds. But a couple of adjustments here. We have a factor of one half here rather than an x. Also, we have our top function being squared minus our bottom function being squared. So we have to make sure we follow these little adjustments when finding the y coordinate of the centroid. So again, we'll have one over the area, which was four thirds. We'll have the integral from negative one to one. We'll have a factor of one half here. Now we have to take our top function, which was x cubed minus x and square it. Don't forget to square it. And then minus the bottom function of x squared minus one. Again, don't forget to square it. So now before we can integrate, we got to clean things up pretty mightily here. One divided by four thirds again is three fourths times. Actually, let's factor out the one half. That's sort of in the way. So we'll just factor that out. We'll have negative one to one. We'll square that out. So we'll get x to the sixth minus, let's see, x cubed times x is x to the fourth, but then you get another version of that. So it's gonna be minus two x to the fourth and then plus x squared minus. All right, we'll square this out. We'll get x to the fourth minus an x squared minus another x squared. So minus two x squared and then plus one. This is with respect to x. Again, don't forget the parentheses here because we need to distribute this minus sign. So we'll go ahead and do that. So we have x to the sixth minus two x to the fourth plus x squared minus x to the fourth plus two x squared minus one. We can combine some like terms here and here as well as here and here. And also in front, we multiply the numerators to get three, the denominators to get eight. We are getting there. Sometimes again, the simplifying is the most annoying part of these questions. So now we have x to the sixth. Combining the x to the fourth gives us minus three x to the fourth. Combining the x squareds gives us three x squared. Now we are ready to integrate. Power rules galore in this problem. So here we go. We will have x to the seventh over seven minus three x to the fifth over five plus three x cubed over three. Those threes will cancel to give you x cubed and then minus x from negative one to one. Let's plug in the bounds. Okay, the bounds have been plugged in. Notice the upper bound again goes in first, followed by the lower bound. You're gonna have three eighths factored to the outside here. When you plug in the upper bound, you should get negative 16 35ths and then subtract what you get from plugging in the lower bound, which should be positive 16 35ths. So then you would have 3 eighths multiplied by negative 32 35ths. And then when you multiply those together, you should get negative 12 35ths. So that gives you the Y coordinate of the centroid. So putting it all together, we have the final answer. The X coordinate and the Y coordinate 
of this centroid were negative one-fifth and negative 12 thirty-fifths respectively. So there is the final answer. If you'd like to, you can go back up to the graph and see if it makes some intuitive sense. Now negative one-fifth is negative 0.2. So that would be like right here. And then negative 12 35ths is like negative 0.3-ish. So negative one, negative two, negative three, and a little more. So it's around here, roughly speaking. So that was where the centroid would lie. And that kind of looks like it's in the geometric center of this very bizarre looking shape. So that makes some intuitive sense, hopefully.